and I'll actually start by that showing that we're using this and then should I mute myself no no I'll, I'll probably mute this <laughs> like the screen no need to because that way we can talk so there's my canvas that I'll work on and then I'm going to put some or I'll some white paint on my palette. I usually put it on the left mm -hmm. um, so that I can, I always know my, well, I, I put the white on the left. Actually, often I put it on the right too, but for a black and white study, it's on the yeah. left. And I'm going to put my black on the right. Okay. And I'm gonna put a little bit, um, just a teensy bit in between. Okay because I want to make five different value strings. So, uh, okay. oopsie. Ooh, I'm going to want a palette knife. Did I include a palette knife on your list of material? Yes, indeed, I do have it. Oh, see, this is what I have. Ooh. Let's see. I'm looking for you, but I'm not, oh, cause I'm spotlighted. Oh, excellent. Okay. I'm going to remove my own spotlight so I can see you. And this is my palette knife. I see it. Right. So I don't tend to use a palette knife when I'm painting because I, I just sort of forget about it. But for something like this, I remember. I um, also want to say that I have this basket of paper towels handy. Oh. I also have a waste basket handy. And I say this because these are very important tools for me, the paper towels and the waste basket. Okay. It's right there. Um, oh, for a beginner too, I don't do this anymore, but if you have a little moisturizer, if you moisturize your hands, they're easier to clean afterward. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh well, I'm not gonna do it right now, you know. <laughs> okay. Um, I, 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 I used to have that on the list, just little, keep a bit of lotion in your, in your supply kit. Um, I think I just got used to having, anyway, it makes it easier to clean the paint off afterward, the oil paint, probably acrylic too. So I want five values, a value in the middle. Um, and I'm going to take a little, take a little bit of this. I want white. That's one. And then I want one that's a little lighter than white. Ooh, it's looking the same as the other. Um, let's see. So I'm trying, and this is deceptively simple, Jenny. <laughs> it look, it might seem very simple, but if you do nothing at all today, but mix up a string of values. I'm gonna take the call, okay. and I'll be back by 12.30. Okay, sweetie, bye-bye. Um, it, it's a, because sometimes I'll, you'll end up with all same values. <laughs> so I'm trying to, I want this one the lightest and this the darkest. And uh, even though I've been doing this for ever, it's hard to get these two different. So if you just, just practicing this is a great a skill. So I want this one to be, I want it really to be almost white. Um, oh. And some, I paint very thickly. So some people don't paint so thick and they don't use quite so much paint, but I tend to paint thick. And I like to do even two demonstrations with two different kinds of brushes, not to be terribly confusing, but I'll stick with one for now. So I put out more white paint. So I've got white, I've got that. Then I want this to be a little dimmer than black. I want it to be very close to black, but not black. So I put just a teensy bit of white there. Um, oops, you stay, I want that to stay black. Uh, let's see, and so here we go. A little dimmer than the black, but I'm using what's on my palette knife there to, to mix. And that feels sort of too close to the black and each, it will be different each time. It's um, not scientific. I'm sure many artists do have a more scientific approach. 
but it's not so much my style. So there might be an artist who approaches this very precisely and tells you exactly like four parts white to one part black. I usually just wing it. Um, I'm gonna go with that even though there's kind of a big jump. Maybe I should make less of a jump. I'll use some of my middle value to lighten this up a little bit. So these are kind of grouped together and these are grouped together. That's sort of a big jump from that to that. Mm -hmm. I suppose I could change that by darkening my middle value. Good news for me is that there's, they're different. There, we can mm -hmm. tell a difference. I can see the difference, yeah. Sometimes you'll mix it up and you'll think, I've mixed up three of exactly the same value, <laughs> despite my efforts. So, all right, they're different. I'm gonna wipe this off now and set my palette knife aside. Okay, for this, I, I'd like to use the biggest brush possible. It's not mandatory, but it's just, I feel that if I can do it with a large brush, it's good practice. So I happen to have a 10, a number 10 bright, and it's flat and square, not to be confused with a brush called a flat, which is a little longer, but a bright is on the short side. Do you have, so I'm gonna use that, but I have some other, I've got two, an eight and a six. 10, eight, six. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start with 10. All right, what I do starting out is this is some linseed oil. Ooh, it hasn't been opened in a little bit. And this takes a little explaining. I'm using this to sort of prepare the brush. So I dip the brush in the linseed oil and um, then I smoosh the brush. I want the linseed oil to go into the brush. Sort of like I used to, my sister is, has very fair hair. And so before going in the pool uh, with the chlorine, she would put conditioner in her hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this gets the oil up into the brush so that the paint um, it makes it easier to clean the brush at the end. That's that's the only reason I'm using the linseed oil. I'm not actually going to use it as a medium. Okay. Now, I wanna get it out of my brush because I don't want it to thin my paint. So I'm actually wiping and I'm showing you so you could see how much oil is in the paper. Um, I'm wiping the oil out of my brush. So I sort of massaged it in and I'm wiping it out it's especially good for a bristle brush. But then I'm, I'm done with that for now. So that's how I use the oil. And I'm going to discard that. Um, okay, so now I've got my brush ready. <laughs> and what I want to do is, can you, oh, I'll scooch, I'll scooch our, our reference a little over there for now. Um, I want to, uh, do a string of values. I'm gonna start with white and that's pretty easy. I'm going into my white over here and I'm making sure that there's a little bit of gray around the white. I just, I want the pure white. And um, this is my style. I've loaded up the brush quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, oh, sorry. I just realized I forgot a very important step. Um, typically, ooh, I wanna show you this. Bear with me. Yeah. I almost always, I work on a gray surface. So I will show you, I'm gonna just wipe this out so I don't make a big, big mess. Okay. And what you, I forgot the first step. What you want to do with your paper, mm -hmm. and then I'll use a ringer. You want to take your paper and take acrylic paint of, I'll do it two different ways, but in this case, if you had acrylic gray paint, we squeeze it on, and don't fear, we'll do it a couple of ways. Oh yeah, I did bought it, that, that was the list, right? Here it is. Oh good. Oh great, so if you, that, um, and then I just, I smear it on, you've probably used far too much this time around. <laughs> Oops, uh, this was much too much. I didn't need that much, but I, wee, I didn't tape this down. So so I um, I want an acrylic round. Okay, so that's what it's for. That's what it's for, just for these black and white studies. 
And as you can see, these other black and white studies, here's a pair, but I've started with a gray ground. So, and this is what we're doing. Essentially, we're, made, we're gonna make that up, but we're working on a gray ground. However, okay. since I've, um, for, it takes a little bit of time to dry, I'm gonna set this aside, wipe my paws. Um, and this is still the acrylic paint. I think, let's see, do I have a little, oh. <laughs> so I'm gonna bring in a ringer. I happen to have this piece of board with a study over here, so I'm, I'll do it like this. So I'm gonna use this as my gray. It's got some gray primer. This one was rather light. Uh -huh. Okay, now, so now. I have a little question. Have yes, a question. yes, yes. Uh, the one that's on the left, this left, uh, the sphere that's on the left. Oh, right here on our screen? Yes. Yes. Is that what we're gonna paint? We, what you're gonna paint? Yes, and I wanted to show you, I photographed the gray sphere so here you can see the shadow is on the left. Yeah. Um, and here, oh, the shadow is on the left also. But here, oh, let's see. I want to show. There we go. I, Look. I see it. I see it. The, the thing that was worrying is that I, I didn't see, of course, my eyes not very well clean, that I didn't see a lot of contrast on it. So it would be difficult for me to. It is. It but in the sample you have on the right, there's more than you are right oh i'm so glad you asked i'm gonna go back to this one up oh <laughs> bear with me my computer's oh, you're changing the light. Oh, you're changing the light. yeah so i have i photographed them oh. in three different lights so these are different photographs and um yes i can I, see it i think my computer is a little tired because it's not quite caught up with me uh -huh. i can see it Okay, so it's that. So, but one thing we could do, because I was thinking the same thing, the light was a bit flat. I'm gonna see if I can up the contrast. There we go. Wow, it's much better. Yeah, and maybe I'll even lower the exposure. Okay. So, there we've got more contrast to work with. So, that was a great question. Um, and an excellent observation that on this one, as you said, it's, it's a highly contrasted and the background's very dark here. Mm -hmm. So that's um, important. And you can set up a value ball or a sphere in many different ways. Mm -hmm. So the reason, I'm gonna stop share for a moment and highlight myself, the reason it was so light is that I had the ball quite, I had the ball and the background close together. So when the background is close to the light source, just like my hand is really bright, you can't, but if the source were farther away, this gets dimmer. Um, or actually this is, oh, oh a really light background that's why Ooh, bear with. you can also do this is a darker background mm -hmm. so each setup is a little bit different and um the one in the sample looks like it, it had a darker background and the light source wasn't quite so blind blinding so um so i would like mm -hmm. let's see i want to try this one more time Make it give us a little bit farther, though that might be kind of confusing. Let's scooch it like this. Okay. Then I'm going to, um, oops, that's a little bit of paint, and because it's oil, I'm going to pick it right up, or it will get on, say, my wrist, and then it will get on everything under the sun. Okay. So I'm going to take some white and I'm going to put the white down. So I really loaded up the end of my brush and I put it down very opaquely. Um, not to be confused with, let's say, this is how I wouldn't do it. Let's say I just went over here and I went like this in the white and I thought, okay, I've got some white paint on my brush. When you look, there's not that much on there. 
And then I could have said, okay. Uh, and what I want you to notice is how this is less opaque than this. And it's not that there's any problem with this, but I just want you to be aware of how much brush at paint that is, how much paint actually makes it onto the canvas. And that there's different ways of handling the paint produce different opacities. Okay, then I, um, I, you didn't see me actually, I just wiped out the white paint. I wanted to start with the brush fairly clean and I'm going to load it up with this and put this next door, Wee. And then I'm gonna wipe this off as much as I can and load it up with the middle value wipe that off, load it up with this, and then I'll go over here into the black, oh, I guess, don't want to, into the black, and I'm looking for, there's a little bit of gray in the black, I'm trying to, I want just the black, uh, again, I've kind of loaded it up, I haven't loaded it that much this time, which seems, and there's my black, so, just doing that alone with oil paint or any is, is quite a bit of work. Um, figuring out how to get it on your brush and how to mix the colors. Now that we've done that, we will use, I want to make this a little bit bigger, can I? Maybe not. It is a matter of work, Martha. <laughs> I, I, and I'm aware, I'm thinking, oh, I'm making it too difficult. It doesn't no, 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 have no. to be so difficult, but... Um, You're making it very easy. Okay. Uh, it is, this is kind of the long route. But now, so there's... I'm going to use this value ball we have on our left. And I'm going to... Let's see, I think I have... I have a little bit of... Um, this is a vine charcoal. I'm questioning myself. I think it's a sort of medium vine charcoal. And this is a bit of um, 2B, like 2B um, Conti crayon or chalk. And I'll try, you can do either one. Let's see if this shows up. A little harder to see this, but um, it kind of depends uh, what you can see and what will mix with the paint. but. Um, some people prefer to, you might sometimes to prefer the white and sometimes the dark. And the first thing I want to say about this value ball and possibly any observed value balls. So I'm going to pull up. Oh, what's handy about this one is, do you see how the shadow shape curves around? Mm -hmm. That curve is very helpful to me. It, it describes... Well, all of these have a nice curve, and that describes the the shape of the sphere. This one is getting a little bit on the flat side, and the more it comes to halfway, it could be almost a straight line. Oh. But when I'm painting, in this case, I am going to not so much paint exactly what I see. I'm not interested in painting this line exactly how it appears. I'm also not interested in painting this tiny seam on the ball or any of these subtle shifts like the little doohickeys. I want you to think about those um, kind of uh, platonic value balls that you have where they're perfect. There aren't any, there's no texture and there's some curve to the shadow. In order to get the form to look right, we're looking for some of those kind of platonic ideals. So I will be exaggerating the curve of this. And uh, and I'm gonna wipe that out because that's, okay. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a rough idea of value ball and the curve. And then we look, and this is where your, your comment about contrast was really good because what I wanna decide is, let's take the shadow mass it's very clearly darker than the background. So I think I'm gonna generalize and um, I'm gonna look at my, these things. And I wonder if I could, I think I'll try 
taking this value for the shadow mass. And you might say, oh, but Margaret, it's lighter down here. There's reflected light and there's this, we can very clearly see the window. <laughs> this shape of blue light that's kind of a rectangle, that's the window that I'm looking at right now. Um, <laughs> Unless it's, what was the other window? Anyway, there's some sunlight there. I'm going to ignore that. I'm going to take this wee and, um, and I'm just going to plunk it in. Now, some people might do a very careful finished value ball, but I, for now, I just want to plunk that in. And, well, I'll keep going. I'm going to wipe this out as much as I can. And I think think so I'm gonna think about the light mass it's very clearly lighter than the background which is helpful I still um, I think I'm going to use this color for the light mass and I'm loading up my brush and for now I'm just putting it right on but you might notice that when I put it on <laughs> Not that you'll end up doing this way, but it's thicker there and it's thinner out there. So I sort of um, accidentally blended so that it's a little darker farther from our eye. Uh, I'm going to wipe all the paint off my brush and load it up again and put it there. And I still, it's sort of accidental, but it serves me that there's a, it's a little darker on the edge and that helps it to recede. I don't see that so much on our reference. It's more of an idea that if it's darker back there and lighter here, this will recede away from us. Now, um, and meanwhile, so I've been cleaning my brush. I'm going to fold that up so I have a clean bit of paper towel and wipe that out. And I'm careful. So I didn't just take this and start trying to clean my brush on it because uh, because then I, I would have just come away with a dirtier brush. I'm very careful about cleaning my brush on a clean bit of paper towel and I'm really squeezing out the paint. I'll throw it away because that paint will get everywhere otherwise. I think now I'm going to try to plunk in the highlight. So I, I want some white paint and I want to make sure it's not got any gray in it. So <laughs> I put a big chunk of white paint on my brush and I'm going to plunk it down right around here. And I feel like I'm being a little bit of a Neanderthal, not to give them a bad name actually, but um, I will sort of, I'm going to scoop up a little bit of that. Oops. Okay. Uh, so I have the shadow mass and the light mass and a little highlight and Okay, I'm going to do the turning, even though I really want to get to the background too. So for the turning, I think that, um, oh, I could use this one. And maybe I'm going to wipe my brush in between because it gets the other paint on it. So I'm wiping my brush between strokes. So, and you might, this might be appallingly ham-handed to you. Uh, I'm gonna leave it like that for now. Even though the background is gray, I want to mix up an opaque paint because really, uh, to me, the background of our reference, this looks pretty dark. And the relationship between the light mass to this, I want this to be darker. But even if it were the same for the exercise, I'd want you to mix up the color just for the experience of trying to mix the color. Ooh, but let's see, can I use any of these? Maybe the middle value, that might be just about perfect. The way I'm gonna check it is, so I'm putting it on the, next to the light side, and that looks like a great contrast. But what about the dark side? It's pretty good, like this definitely looks a little bit lighter. I'm gonna try it up here where it's a little bit lighter than the dark side. In our reference, it looks lighter still. So maybe I'm gonna try mixing this value up uh, and then adding, having it be just a hair lighter. So let's see, there's that value. 
and I'm gonna add some more white because this looks about the same, but maybe a bit darker. I think I will use some of this because I don't think I'm gonna need much of that anymore. So that's still, well, I guess that's, that's a hair lighter perhaps. I'm gonna add a little bit more though. I'm gonna wipe my palette knife off now and discard this so I'm not wallowing in paint. Let's see how that goes. And I usually, I try to keep one brush in one hand and a paper towel in the other. Um, this still has that other value that's a bit darker. Let's see how this works. Ooh, also, I'm gonna try sc scraping this off. The scraping, the success of the scraping depends it might be a little stranger on a stretched canvas or on a piece of paper. They'll feel different depending on your surface. Okay, this is our lighter, I think it's our lighter value. So I'm gonna try this. And the relationship, it might not be exactly the relationship we're seeing, but the important part is that this is lighter than the shadow mass of the ball. So I'm interested in trying to capture the relationships of what's lighter and what's darker. Is that life telling us it's time to move on? <laughs> oh, I forgot something. So. Oh, it's very sweet. Like throwing that away. <laughs> oh. All right, so I think on this side, or I'm going to think about the stem and I'm going to take a little bit of white. So I'm using the edge of my brush and a bit of the white just along the edge. Let's see. And then I'm going to do this. I guess I could, and now I'm gonna wipe this off because it might've picked up some gray. I'm gonna see if I could just, so there's the side of my stem, white, and I'm gonna use this dark. Again, I'm, I'm just using the tip of my brush and there's a little on the tip. And there's the dark side of my stem. And that's very nice. Thank you, and now, so this, this is the one of the basic goals these guys and finding like what's lighter, what's darker. And it will be different with each reference. You know, you could light up the ball and this has a different situation. You can move the shadow. You know, it's not only a different shadow, but you know, it's different. So you can change the, the lighting. One more thing you could do, which I almost forgot about. It, it, this does not work well on a panel, but on the canvas, I've got this palette knife. It's got a, a straight side and um, and sort of a little dip. Sometimes the, there's some that are straight out and they, but anyway, this is how mine looks and that could be important to what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm scraping. Look, I just scraped off the paint and <laughs> so if I really wanted to work into this value ball and, uh, or not if, but some, it's just sort of an option. Now I'm gonna chuck this. Let's say, I could do it with a bright, but you might say, well, if I wanted to blend it, that I would want to use a filbert. And, and this reminds me of Mary and her brushes and how I think if I were you and looking for big brushes. What's a filbert? A filbert, do you see how it's sort of, um, maybe think of a nut. I'm not sure if that's why it has its name, but whereas this so-called bright is very square, the filbert. Yes, and um, okay. this is a larger filbert. You know, there's the mommy and the baby. And this is one of a, a different color. 
and it, it's just a smaller round and they tend they're more for blending and these produce that very chunky stroke um so but why did i do this just sometimes when i'm doing a still life i lay in those thick chunks of color and value but then maybe i feel like i'm swimming in the paint so i could scrape it off and i could i could even blend maybe i want to blend like this and maybe you say well blend with your filbert goose okay i'll blend with my filbert um so i can um I'm looking. F I L B E R T. Yes, good question. Um, I used filberts in grad school, and then I haven't really used them for ages, <laughs> ages and ages. But I just got them again this year because of um the painting, the photorealistic painting. Um, but scraping that off, I could, I could still go back with, I'm going to put aside the filbert. I might decide, okay, I want to go back and put in some more dark. Maybe I want to mix some black and that second value and get really dark over here. So maybe I want to do that. And perhaps I want to restate, this has gotten fuzzy. So. I might go back with the same sort of thick paint, but maybe not as thick around the edge. Um, and uh, perhaps, perhaps I want to restate more about the ball. So I might even, ooh, hmm. Maybe I'll take a little bit of, oh, you can't see anymore. I'll scooch him out of the way. There we go. I'm gonna try some of this light plus white and um, get it lighter at the edge. Maybe I even wanna come right to the edge. But this is sort of, so this is messing around with it. Um, oopsie, do you see how the one stroke was a certain value in color, but then I came back and did it again and I lifted up the dark paint accidentally so the first stroke got me what I wanted. But when I came back a second time, not thinking, I had picked up this paint, it sort of gone into there. And then when I do that, of course, I've got the black paint on my brush. So I like to say with oil paint, one stroke, just one stroke, because otherwise you're picking up your paint, maybe and putting it down someplace you don't want it. So I'll go back again with, um, so I'm gonna go back there, but as soon as I get in the dark paint, I've now got dark paint on my brush, which might be okay if I wanna go back this way, but um, I'll do one more little, a mix of this and a mix of this to kind of go up here, Whee, oops, <laughs> something like that. And now I, I tried wiping out my brush. I'm gonna throw that piece of paper towel away. I'm gonna use a smaller bright I really like the chunky brights, but, ooh, I forgot with my filbert. Before I use this bright, I'm gonna put it in the oil, like there's this pile of oil, and I'm gonna work the oil, I'm getting it all up into the fair, toward the ferrule, mush, 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 mush. And I'm massaging it in so it gets up there. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna wipe it back out. It's also a palette paper, and I just happen to have, I don't have a good explanation for why it's even there, right? <laughs> I'm not sure why I put it there. Um, oh. It's a long story, but you can buy palette paper that's gray, too. And that oh. can be handy because it's a middle value gray, so um, it will show you this middle value gray. And, and that way... You can kind of see what is that color because you might not really know what value it is but if it's right there it shows you a little bit better how the color would look not on a white palette because your painting might not be white it might be yeah. much darker so but now i think i'd like to just load up let me do this again i want to get straight white on my brush and i'm trying to get it at the end but not overkill so i'm trying to get it just right at the tip 
sky. <laughs> Wee. Okay, there's definitely some at the tip. And I've going to put in a highlight, so I'm kind of lightly... Bonk. And you might like a much more blended highlight. Uh, and maybe I do too. So I could wipe this out and I could see what could I... I might just leave it as a sort of chunky thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I could keep working into this after the maybe. scrape. I could, maybe I think, oh, I don't, I want this to be more clear there. Oh, and maybe I think, well, I want, maybe I want that a little bit more. And maybe in some places, what I love to look at in the reference is how there's not much of a turning, but so here we know that the light mass is lighter than the background. And here we know it's darker, but there's a little place where it gets very similar. Just a moment. Sometimes in certain references or positions, there's a bigger stretch where you're not quite sure which is lighter and which is darker. And I think that's very interesting. Um, for this, maybe I want to add a little bit more dark. Um, and maybe I want my edges to be a, a bit more clear. And oh, now you being such a good student, you might think, what about the reflected lights <laughs> and yeah, whatnot? Teacher, but that was the window. You decided not to do the window. Right. Well, yeah. actually, reflected light can happen even if there's not. Oopsie. And I tend to go for just super chunky. But, uh, but reflected light can happen even, do you see down here? Yeah. It's a little lighter, and you also might wonder, why is it a little bit more yellow or orange? And that's because I took a photograph on a table that was a sort of um, wood color, like my desktop here. So it's okay. reflecting the yellow, it's reflecting the light of the surface underneath it. Oh. And um, so that can be a reflected light, not just another light source, but I think this one... That little bit of reflected light is just the other side of um, of the background, or I, I think I blocked it with another canvas. So there's a reflected light that doesn't necessarily mean it's reflecting a light source. It's just bouncing light on the object from the tabletop or a wall. Oh. And here, I think this one, this bit of reflected light, I think that that's actually... Um, the other side of the setup, like the other little wall of the box. Um, I want, by the, so, so that's, it's reflected light from a wall, essentially, but you could see this reflected light from below as well. Yeah, so, it's very obvious, the bottom one, where the, uh, the yeah. wood reflecting, um, you, you can see the yellow. And I think, for my purposes, though, in a way, I'm happy, oops, I lost my dark, but, just knowing that there's a light side and a shadow side, yeah. engaging the difference between the value of the background and this, and the value of the background and that, and even on the stem, that here, the light side, so gauging that. But often mine look more like this, where, you know, they're pretty chunky and I haven't attended to reflected light. Um, mm -hmm. Very often students, or even myself, when we try to paint reflected light, we do it too bright and it, it, um, so let's say we know that there's, yes. So if we want reflected light there, we still have to make sure that it's not any brighter than what's in the, the bright side. Let me see it more closely. Um, so reflected light, uh, and my shadow is still pretty dark. What if I can, can I get, or not, I meant it's not dark enough is what I meant. Um, and I don't usually uh, finesse these like this, or you might not think it's finessed. Um, I usually just go for the, I'm interested in the light and the dark and the, the background and bear with me that this is not, like I've, I've got sort of not the right proportions of light to dark, but we'll just leave that. But let's say I wanted to put in the reflected light. If I just think, oh, this bit here, that's that's lighter. It's reflection of the stem. And this is lighter than, than this. 
or even if we looked at a different one, like sort of hard to tell that. If I want it lighter than the surroundings, what I don't want to do is go, okay, well, this is lighter than dark here. There's my reflected light. And you say, well, no, that's too light. That's lighter than the light mass. Mm -hmm. So that that's a something to look out for when you're doing the reflected light. But then, of course, scraping it. You can say, well, that's just bright. Oh. Um, but I, I, tend, I tend to kind of lose my interest <laughs> after I've gotten the basics um, yeah. and yeah. just these three. So that, that's the value study.